reading tonight is from uh, Exodus 23, verses 20 to 20. Starting at verse 20. Behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Do not provoke him, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. But if you indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries. For my angel will go before you and bring you in to the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. You shall not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do according to their works, but you shall utterly overthrow them and completely break down their sacred pillars. So you shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and your water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of you. No one shall suffer miscarriage or be barren in your land. I will fulfill the number of your days. Amen. So the protection. The angel protected his people, verse 20. Uh, we think about this angel. Who was this angel? That is the big question. There would be different uh, thoughts about that, uh, who it is. Uh, but there's a clue here, I think, you know, in the, in the section. Note the two angels who visited Lot. Not in this particular, but you remember Lot, uh, where the two angels uh, visited Lot. What do we note about that? We notice there that it had a, a small A for angel in that case. So there were just ordinary angels. Two uh, messengers, of course, sent by God. But uh, there's a difference, you see, in, uh, you notice, the angel protected his people. Capital A, right? And that gives us uh, maybe a little clue to it there. Again, so the angel, capital A, was to bring them out, verse 23. Right? And the place was being prepared. A place? The place where they were going to. They were bringing them out to go to the promised land. And... Uh, the place God was preparing, the place for them. Wasn't that great? Verse 20, it says, Behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way that and to bring you into the place where I have prepared. Beware of him, it says, it's a warning here. Beware of him and obey his voice. Do not provoke him, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. So, who is the angel? Again, the question is, in uh, maybe uh, one uh, verse there in Exodus 3, 2, and the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of the bush. That was to Moses, when he called, Moses was called. So he looked. And behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Again, a reminder that that is the angel of the Lord. The angel of the Lord then would be the most likely the pre-incarnate appearance of Christ, of the Messiah, God's Son. Ah, so, the presence of the Lord directed them. There we have uh, the uh, tabernacle and uh, all the tribes were round about that and uh, they may have been set out in that sort of uh, order, uh, you know, but uh, that was where they uh, met in the wilderness and the thing we, we want to remember is that uh, the Shekinah glory underneath that cloud and that cloud was uh, would uh, be over that and when that cloud was like that they there 
They stayed. They put up camp and stayed. Never moved. But when this moved, they moved with it. And it was a, a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day. It was that which protected them from the Egyptians. And would God would protect them in times. Uh, this, of course, is the altar of sacrifice. And the labor then is there where they wash them. They had to go in cleansing and pure and uh, uh, into the tabernacle to continue with their uh, sacrifices. System. Right. So, let's continue on. In uh, Exodus 14, 19, again, we're, we're really uh, <coughs> making a big issue of this person, this angel. Uh, and the angel of God who went before the camp of Israel moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud went from before them and stood behind them. That was when they were when leaving Egypt uh, and their protection, you see. So, you see, uh, it would move behind them. That was to protect them from the Egyptians' army, you know. And so uh, it was, able, it was uh, not always leading before them, uh, but it, in this case, uh, it could be also behind the army, the rear. So, more proof. You want more proof? Uh, Exodus 33, 14. And he said, God said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. So, there is some mention of, of the divine presence in, in the scriptures. Uh, and God's presence in the tabernacle, you say, as well. My presence shall go with you. Jesus' presence is promised many times. He says, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end. Finally, in Isaiah 63, verse 9. <clears throat> in all their affliction, he was afflicted. And the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. And he bore them and carried them all the days of old. So again, you see, it's finding God's presence, you see. He's so caring, he's so loving, he's so concerned for his people and leading them. Though they were so backward and stubborn and rebellious, Yet, you know, God, in his great love and mercy, uh, came to help them. In 1 Corinthians 10, 3 and 4, all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink that came out of the, from Egypt. For they drank of that spiritual rock that, that followed them, and that rock was Christ. That's the best commentary on, uh, on that, uh, you know, uh, and explaining who is leading them. Uh, the Holy Spirit has been showing us who it is. Note the end of verse 21. What does it say at the end of verse 21? Uh, my name is in him. That interesting. My name is in him. So it must be uh, very important there to see that God is making it very special. There is the second person of the Trinity is going to be leading his people. The one who is sent to be uh, the one who guided, the one who is leading the way for salvation uh, Yahweh, the I am that I am. Jesus used that name, of course, didn't he? He said, I am 
the Good Shepherd. So often, seven times John takes it up in his. God did not say that about the angels, did he? What did God say about the angels? About the small a? There's a good reference, uh, of course. It's in Isaiah 9, 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name what, will be called Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God, in this case, I want to make sure that his name is Wonderful. And then Second Counselor. Third, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, how he could be a father. He's a father in the, fa in the faith, and he's uh, uh, leading them for our salvation. And uh, he's the Prince of Peace. He has brought peace to us. And so it's, it's so wonderful to think about uh, those things. Making a big issue of that, you know. But uh, the possession, verse 23. Uh, verse 23 is, For my angel will go before you and bring you into the Amorites and the Hittites the, and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. You know, it's quite something here it says about this. The warning is, of course, against idolatry in verse 24. There's a, a warning there that they don't... Uh, you shall not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do according to their works, but you shall utterly overthrow them and completely break down their sacred pillars. So the words that always mean the uh, abolishing of those things, it was very, was highly essential and necessary. There was to be no uh, working with them. And it was a real warning to them, you know, but unfortunately Israel did not listen. Some of the kings of Israel, of course, was quite bad. Judah, uh, too. Uh, there was Ahaz. Has. He uh, was known to have uh, sacrificed his son, uh, you know. It's so amazing, isn't it, that he had one of the great kings, Hezekiah, a son of his. He came out to be such a great young king and, uh, and led the country, you know. Did make mistakes, like everybody else, but not perfect. But he, uh, he was one of the great kings, reformers. So there was a warning there against idolatry. Well, the rewards for standing firm, then, verses 25 and 26. So you shall serve the Lord your God, and, you, and he will bless your bread and your water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of you. That was quite something, and no one shall suffer miscarriage or be barren in your land. I will fulfill the number of your days. So they are going to be uh, grow and populate, populate the, the country. And then the cause, the enemies, to be fearful. There was a great fear, you see, when they were coming into the promised land. And the fear of the Canaanites and those in Jerusalem, Jericho, were scared of them, you know. Verses 26, I will send my fear before you, and I will cause confusion among all the people to whom you come, and will make all your enemies turn their backs to you. And I will send hornets before you, which will drive out the Hivites and the Canaanites and the Hittites from before you. And they could, they could have uh, at least left but some of them didn't. Some of them held, like Jericho. Uh, they could have uh, a left uh, their, uh, their area to them, but they didn't uh, do that. They got the warning 
uh, and the fear, they knew they were coming. Uh, you know, then times it wasn't, they were still, uh, uh, it seemed to be, there were those who uh, they all they knew about all these things ahead of time. They knew what had happened to uh, 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 Pharaoh, and uh, they knew what happened in the, going through the, the Red Sea, uh, and all that. And they thought, oh, this is just amazing. And they were quite afraid of it all. Right. And then the wisdom in a, a show, a slow, what is it? Wisdom in a slow deliverance and possession. Why did he do that, you see? Verses 29 and 30. I will not drive them out from before you in one year, lest the land become desolate, you see, and the beasts of the field become too numerous for you. Little by little I will drive them out before you until you have increased and you inherit the land. So they had needed more people there. So it's very great wisdom, isn't it, uh, in showing a slow deliverance. Uh, they weren't going to speed up fast before they could uh, manage to uh, take it over. And the boundary then, verse 31. And I will set your bounds from the Red Sea to the sea. To, to the sea. From the Red Sea to the sea. And, and from the desert to the river, that river would be um, 31, uh, the river Euphrates, right across to there. They're never really able to fully take it all in. Solomon did take in quite a bit. For I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your land, into your hand, sorry, and you shall drive them out before you. Now, uh, <coughs> and so that is the boundary but no covenant making with the nations. Verses 32 and 33. There was no agreement with them, no entering into a, a, a pact with them, though uh, we do remember that uh, Joshua did, he got cutted, he got fooled there by one lot, and uh, he, they saw they come from afar and he found out no other world. But they... Uh, it worked out that they did help and care and leave with them, so they wanted to make a peace a peace treaty with them. But that was all. They still wouldn't be ending up not to, to make uh, enter into a covenant. When it talks about a covenant, it means that they'll, they'll enter into worship. They'll enter into uh, a united services, united gatherings together, you see. And uh, 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 like we could say, or, or, uh, so they weren't to have any pact. They weren't to have any enter into any any of the religious practices. You see, uh, and so they couldn't make a covenant with them. Uh, though sadly, uh, Joshua, that was one place where he he got caught. He slept up there. Now, now is it so you shall make no covenant with them? nor with their gods. It was all to do in the area of worship, wasn't it? You know, bowing down to false idols and gods, false worship, uh, and using them in their, you know, they shall not bow, they shall not dwell in your land, lest they make you sin against me. For if you serve their gods, it will surely be a snare to you. And so it reminded them. And that's what happened, you see. These false gods, uh, they, these um, various, the, the ways that they, uh, the Canaanites worshipped, uh, and they did. They became a snare to them. Uh, and they got uh, affected by it. So, the angelic protection. In Hebrews 1 5. For to which of the angels 
uh, did he ever say? We're quoting from uh, Hebrews here. From which of the angels did he ever say, a small aid? You are my son. Today I have begotten you. And again, I will be to him a father. And he shall be to me a son. But when he again brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all the angels of God worship him. And so all are to worship at the feet, except worship. We remember that uh, the Apostle John was going to fall down and worship uh, and it, with a, a, an angel before an angel who was um, who, who brought a message to him. But the angels told him, no, you don't. I'm a, a creature like you, created being like you. Worship God only. But the spirit of Jesus is the one to worship and to adore. I thought, uh, as I looked at this, uh, the angelic protection and who that is, it was important to, uh, to think about it, you know because it was important to them, important to us, and important to apply to us in our own present day situation, you know, worshipping the Lord. And uh, worship him in spirit and in truth, and adoring him, magnifying him. And so we're learning about that in the Old Testament. The Old Testament is there for our learning, it's there for our help. But of course, we do have to use the New Testament to understand some things a bit more. They, of course, would have been much more understood and much more. Uh, sadly, you see, the Bible is in, you know, in our say code, but it's it's in uh, it's condensed, and so it's saying a lot in the particular bit, you know, uh, and then it's uh, that some would some would say that when Paul was preaching, he would have said far more than was there, and so we get a condensed form of his message. Maybe even Peter said a lot more on the day of Pentecost, but it's a condensed form for us. Uh, to the Holy Spirit directed the writer, Luke, in that case, in writing that.